You know, it's funny, Kenyatta asked me, um, sent me a text message, and he said, uh, where did Noah, Abraham, and all of them go? And they died, right? I said, you have to wait to Bible study, because that's where we're going next. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. I said, that's where we're going next, so you're going to have to wait for that answer. He's all right, I'll wait. But we've been talking about Acts chapter 2. Go to Acts chapter 2. We're talking about the church. We're going to stay talking about the church. Because as, as, as I'm going through the scriptures on Acts chapter 2, there's certain things that are popping out at me. And I'm studying from this book. This book is called... Um, book is called Luke the, the Historian, the Book of Acts, and it breaks down each scripture line by line. So that's what I've been studying from, and then there's special topics, and one of the special topics was hope, and the next, the next special topic is hell. So while it's breaking down the whole chapter, chapter 2 of Acts, I'm studying it, that way I can come and teach you. But uh, Acts chapter 2, starting... With verse 24, it says, Who God had raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David speaking concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh shall rest in hope. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad, for when my flesh shall rest in hope. So what's that say? What's that, what's that say to you? It says, his tongue will rejoice, his flesh will rest in hope. So the part? His heart. And his heart rejoiced. So let's define hope. What did we define hope as? Forward of confidence to that which is good and beneficial. So if his flesh is resting in hope, and his mouth is, is, is what's his mouth going to show? Um, it's praising. Okay, and his heart is rejoicing, right? Yes. So does that mean that the situation isn't necessarily right? Because, because look at verse 24. It says, whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death, which is talked about Christ, that Christ was raised up by God, he loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that death could hold him, right? For David speaking concerning him, he said, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. David lived way before Christ had even touched the earth. But he's saying that, his, that he always saw God before him, that he always saw Jesus before him, that he always was focused on the fact that the Messiah was coming. So because of that, because he looked in expectation, he said that his heart rejoiced, right? right. I don't have the scripture in my head. His heart rejoiced and his tongue was glad. Huh? Mine's the other way around. My, mine says his heart rejoiced and his tongue was glad. Okay, mine says his heart was glad and my tongue and his tongue rejoiced. Okay, and his flesh was in hope. Now, so that says that when we, yes sir? Rest in hope, right? His body rests in hope, right? His body rests in hope, right? Is that what George says? Okay, so, but look at this. He says that his heart rejoiced and his tongue was glad. So that means that just because we don't see our final situation that we're in hope for from God doesn't mean we, we, we are in a woe is me state. You see what I'm saying? saying? That he said that his heart was rejoicing in expectation, his mouth was lined up with his expectation. And that his flesh was lined up with his expectation. Everything was pointed to the end product, to the fruit of the situation before the fruit was ever in his hand. He never physically saw Christ, but he said that the Lord was always before his face. That's our same hope. That we've never seen Christ, but our mouth lines up with him, our heart lines up with him, and we know that our flesh, even though it's going to decay and go into the dirt, and the Bible says that we get a new body, and there's a new earth, and there's all this new stuff that's going to happen that we're going to 
walking around singing, bread, walking around with heaven all day. Walking around singing. There you go, you got a soul. <laughs> and because of these things, we have hope, right? First Timothy 1, turn there real quick. First Timothy 1, 1. It's our hope. Christ is our hope. Christ is our hope. Jesus. It says, Paul, an apostle of Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Same hope as David had. David's bad boy. I love David. Can you imagine that? God promised that Jesus would sit on David's throne. That has not happened yet. He comes from the lineage of David. But Christ hasn't come back to reign yet. He came, walked on earth to die. But he has not come to reign as he had been promised to the Jews. And that's what the Jews have missed. That's why they, they have missed it in that there's some Jews that are called Messianic Jews because they believe in Christ. But then there's some Jews that think that he hasn't never come yet because the Jesus that showed up didn't show up reigning as king, but showed up as a lamb. Showed up walking the earth, and and he said he clearly said, "I come to separate households. I come to separate mother and daughter, father and son. I come to do these things. I come to spread the gospel. I come to die for sin. I came to to eradicate death and sin and all these things. So now there's some Jews who have believed, but the majority of the Jewish world still does not believe Christ has touched the earth. First Timothy one." So Jesus is our hope. Jesus is our hope. And even though they're still in hope of the Messiah, they've missed Christ. They've missed the anointed one. You see what I'm saying? So last week we looked at the second coming. Let's go there. That was a good, that was a good scripture. Mm -hmm. Titus chapter 2. Real quick. Titus? Titus 2. 11 through 15. Huh? Still with 11 through 15. Yeah, we just want to deal with verse 11. And 13. So we're talking about the second coming, of hope in the second coming, hope in the believer to be presented to God, hope laid up in heaven, hope as the ultimate salvation, hope as the assurance of salvation. We're going to look at this one scripture, and then we're going to go to hope in eternal life, which is in Titus 1. So you only got to flip one page. Verse 11 says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation have appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodly, that in ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present world, yeah. looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse 12. Teaching us that denying ungodliness. What do we say about ungodliness? We dug into this scripture last week. We spent about almost a whole hour on this scripture. Ungodliness. Contrary to what? Contrary to godliness, but contrary to religious belief, to religious actions, religious expectations, right? What's the next word? Worldly lust. Worldly lust. We talk about lust. Christina don't like that word. <laughs> we talk about how it's looked at as being a bad thing, yeah. but it isn't always that. It's always it's not. Lust for like passion. Worldly passion. Passion. Like passion. Passion. Yeah. passion. I like God and God wants to have the passion that we story. have for him. For him. Right. So, so we deny worldly lust, but it's okay to be passionate right. about the things of God, right? right. <laughs> to lust after the things of God. <laughs> All right, what's the next word? We should live soberly. 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 Go ahead. We, we kind of talked about that last week. Yeah. Like, with alcohol. Okay. And how you're kind of like, how you are in that. Okay. When you're not sober, mm -hmm. but we have to, you have to have a steady mind, steady mind frame. Alert, Alert. steady. 
like that, vigilant, righteously. What, before we go to El Mal, what does righteous mean? Right standing with God. Okay, so when we live righteously, what does that mean? Say that again. Living in a godly manner. Yes. Living in a godly manner. Such as. Being mindful of what we do, what we say, making sure it's in line with what he wants us to do and say and live. Okay. So not necessarily, not necessarily worldly morals, but biblical values and principles. Right? Character. Biblical character, because because a person who is a great humanitarian that has no faith, they have great values, they have great morals, they have great character, they're going to hell. There is no hope of salvation in them. They don't believe in God. They're an atheist. So because they're atheists and they don't believe that God exists, their expectations are nothing but to to live as, as best fulfilled life that they can live on this earth, treat people good, and then go to the dirt and let the worms eat them. There is no expectations. There is no hope. Nets not stacked up stuff out and no eternal salvation, no eternal hope, no God govern them. And, and what happens is that they look as if they live a biblically character, character life because they love people, they, they don't curse, they 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 uh, are sober, they're vigilant, they're alert, they, they're very astute. These people uh, could be very prosperous, they could look blessed, but yet they have no faith, they have no Christ in their life. No anointing. They're not anointed, but are they blessed? How? Yeah. They are blessed. How? How? I'm just asking, I don't know. I'm just saying, okay. You said, are they blessed? Right. Who's blessing them? Right. Okay. They don't believe. But are they unaware? What if you're unaware? Okay. Okay. Unaware of what? God's blessing. Yes. The Bible says, whose report shall we believe? Who is the arm of so the Lord revealed themselves. to? They're believing that everything that they acquired and achieved is yeah. themselves. Because mm -hmm. okay. everything it can look like somebody, just like you know somebody like you know artist or you know Oprah, Jay Z, somebody like that that you would look at in the world that looks like they have absolutely everything. And a lot of people would say they are really blessed, but they're not living in the will of God. Right. And or even if they even believe. It says the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous, for the just. So 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 look at that. Look at that. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. So say you know somebody that is just all out with say 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 a drug dealer, right? And he says, you know what? I just feel unction. $5,000. Now, the pious, religious person would say, oh, no, I can't take that. And they miss the scripture that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. They miss the scripture. I receive. 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 That's right. and, and I'm going to take that, and then I'm going to launder it into the kingdom. That's right. Amen. I'm going to launder it as money into the kingdom. I'm going to take the 5000 I'm going to take 500 of it. That's right. I'm going to sow a tithe, yes, and then I'm going to take an offering and bless yes, the church with an offering also. Right. And then I'm going to believe God for increase on the seed, mm -hmm. because that's my hope. That's right. That I believe in the kingdom's way, and because I believe in the kingdom's way, I will operate in the same way. Right? Because when I first came to church, I remember losing everything. And my mindset was that God didn't want me to have all that wicked stuff. Right. But it wasn't that. It was that I was used to getting my income mm -hmm. in a wicked way. And now that stream had dried up. 
So what I had, I kept selling to try to take care of my household, but it wasn't that he was stripping me, it was that I was trying to maintain my life. You see what I'm saying? Not my lifestyle that I was used to living, I was done with that life. And that, and that river had dried up. I equated that that God had stripped me. God didn't strip me. He's not into stripping. He's into cleansing. And he allowed that river to be dried up in order for him to establish other rivers into my life. You know what I'm saying? So your understanding was that he was stripping you, but you would have valued. You would have valued it differently. I was wrong. I was wrong. I, I, remember, I remember the last thing I had to sell was my chain. I had my, my chain and my diamond crusted key and 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 paid like four grand for that thing. And I sold it to this dude I didn't even know for a thousand dollars. And, and I remember Rukai brought him to me, and I met him in Virginia, and I took my chain off, and he stuck his hand out, boom. And I put my chain in his hand, and he put it around his neck, and I looked at him, he gave me the grand, and I came home and gave my wife the grand, and I said, pay the rent. That's right. And I, and I was equating that as, as God stripping me. But, but I don't think he was stripping me. I was just thinking that this was the responsible thing to do now. You see right. what I'm saying? The responsible. I didn't, I didn't, those those things validated me. Mm -hmm. And I don't need those things to validate me anymore. You see what I'm saying? So sure. so because of that, I used it to make sure. Oh, oh God, it hurt. <laughs> I like that chain. I like that chain. I know. It's not like a boy can tell a story. <laughs> Cause see, I was thinking about that chain, you know, and I could, you know, put a little dot chain, change the key in for a dot, uh, a cross, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so let's talk about um, redemption of all creation. Turn to Romans chapter eight. Before we move, real quick, I just have a quick question. Yes, ma'am. Because you know, where you were saying about. Um, Taking the money from the drug dealer and then you, and, and then putting that forth to the church. Are you saying that the thoughts behind that before were of worldly thoughts? Because worldly thoughts would be that that would be wicked money mm -hmm. and you can gain from wicked ways, mm -hmm. and it wouldn't, you know, make that would bring something bad to like the church. Yeah, right. Like that curse. That's like. So that is a worldly thought and not a godly thought. So, okay, so so ask me the question. So you made a statement to ask me the question. Why would I consider that as like not? Why wouldn't I consider that wicked? It, it, that to me, scripture. that to me, I mean, because I see the scripture in there, but still, that's like hard for me. Because right? that's religion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Religion is telling you mm -hmm. that's unclean. Right. Don't touch no unclean thing. Right? But money is currency. And Ecclesiastics says the money solves all problems. Ecclesiastics says that. The Bible also says that if you sow a seed, you'll reap a seed. You see what I'm saying? And then the Bible says that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. However, however you prosper, you are not going to use it for wickedness. You're going to use it to advance the kingdom. You see what I'm saying? If you are lined up with the way that God's financial plan is, and if you are doing what God says to do, you see what I'm saying? Now, if you receive the 5000 and put it in your pocket, and you're not following the way of the kingdom, then, then, then you're in disobedience in that area. You see what I'm saying? But if you are following the ways of the kingdom, and, he, and, and, and the seed grows up, and the wicked comes by, right? The birds of the air come and fertilize the ground, Instead of eating the seeds, they dump and poop on your own, on your on your on your field and fertilize your field. However, however it comes, God uses man to parallel bless. The pie in the sky is not going to fall on your table. You see what I'm saying? So if the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just, then if the wicked put something in my hand. I immediately do what God tells me to do. I bring my offering to the altar, 
I sow my seed. At that moment, I'm doing exactly what God has told me to do with the finances that come into my hands. Mm -hmm. I see what you're saying, though. Like, uh, if you sow with a wicked seed, mm -hmm. you're going to reap wickedness. Well, see, oh, yeah, did she wicked. steal the money? No, I understand your but thought process. Thought process. Right, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Because you didn't do anything wrong. All you did was receive. You see what I'm saying? And, 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 and what I'm saying is, it's not like you said, hey, go out there and get that money on that corner and bring it back. This is, this is an arbitrary situation that all of a sudden, somebody just says, I want to help you out. Here you go. They feel a little compassion for your situation. And that has to do with my reaping of good and following godly ways. Mm -hmm. And that's that, okay. You stay in obedience. Right. The world is on a course. And because the world's on a course, all this wickedness is going on around us. And we are in a world system. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? We are in a world system. So, so the money that passes through your hands has already done some wicked things already. Yes, sir. Yes, Just sir. because now that you have knowledge of it, and, be, and, and you can't let religion get in the way of what God is doing. Mm -hmm. And the money hasn't done anything wicked. Yes, because sir. let me tell you something. Yes, let me tell you something. Yes, let me tell you something. If the lights are off and there's no food in the cupboards and it's wintertime and there's no gas in the tank, and there's an eviction notice on the door, and five thousand dollars would do it, and five thousand dollars came from the drug dealer. You're gonna take it because dire straits have come. But 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 but, but when the lights are on and it's summertime and the AC's blowing and everything's good, and 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 and, and your bank account is large, and then the five thousand dollars comes, don't turn away from it. Receive it. And give it to church. I was gonna. Say, Not in all, in all Sorry. actuality, Sorry. when That's it. It, it's almost like a frame of mind when you, like you were saying, like the religion part of it, because on Sunday mornings or Tuesdays or whenever there's an offering going forth, when everybody's going up putting money in an offering plate, you don't know where anybody got their money right. from that's sitting in the pews. So, but because I have knowledge, right. my frame of mind is right. thinking it's so right. if the person yeah. sitting right beside you could have gotten their money from somebody on the block or whatever. I was a trustee at our last church. There are many times where uh, 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 Roche, was, where uh, yeah, we uh, go upstairs to we <laughs> go upstairs to do the offering. I found a marijuana brooch in the really fun box. We found uh, there have been times where we've gotten um, uh, Charlestown Racetrack coins where somebody probably just took money out the pocket and drove it in. So you don't know where people are getting their income from, but but you still have to be obedient and do with money what you know is right. When I started going to church, I had $200 in my pocket and no job. $200 was, was, was the last bit of money that I had from me hustling. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what the hell am I doing? Mm -hmm. I mean, I was down in my, my last, and I walked into church, and I, and I had already knew, known what tithing was. When the, when the offering time came, I said, okay, I know that God expects 10% of my income. I counted my money, and I gave 10% of it, and I gave $20. $20. That was my first seed. That was my first seed. All oh, this money's evil. That's not what I thought. My, my first thought was 10%. Do you have to limit yourself to 10%? Oh, no. That, that's all God asked for. So what do you feel about when churches, I churches in situations where the churches will say, you sold $100. You know what I'm saying? They, put, they, they, they come out and just said that now. You know, it could be a pledge. Sometimes they do pledge. Yeah. Well, 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 I've been somewhere. No, it wasn't a pledge. I've it's been just, somewhere. This is if you want a big blessing, you sow a big so so big. Now 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 now. Oh. When we were when we when we were in, else when we were in L.A. <laughs> when we were in L.A. Right? right. They 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 set up the offer the first night. And Apostle Christ was sitting up, up up front. He said, "Listen, we don't do this for a competition, but this is how we do things. This is how we've always done things. Right. We've been we've been an uh, organization for 22 years." He said, anyone who has a thousand dollar offering or more, please line up at the microphone on each side. If you do not have a thousand dollars or more, please remain seated 
and we will receive your offering also. This is not a competition. This is not how we, who can give the most. This is just how we do things. We have a budget to meet of $1.2 million for this conference. So right. they started lining up. Apostle Price said, and I'm starting an offering from my personal account with $90,000. Somebody please come get this offering. He hand the offering off. Then they just started dropping. $10,000, $20,000, $5,000, $1,000, $15,000, $100,000. dollars It was dropping. They were dropping. And, they, and I watched them accumulate $672,000 like that. They just said, uh, but it was. They just said, how much the offering was, right? So, so six hundred seventy-two thousand four hundred and eleven dollars. I never saw that before. I didn't feel anything wrong with that. I was scared. Now, in my younger walk, I remember being in the church and and someone saying, "We need let's raise the offering. We need fifty more dollars." We need fifty more dollars. Fifty dollars came. Oh, we need thirty-five more dollars. Somebody got thirty-five more dollars. I felt bad about that. But when I went to preach at the house of prayer, the pastor took an offering, and she said something's telling me that he needs more money. Right? I walked away. I, I removed myself from it. I walked completely away and allowed her to do her stuff. Nobody else brought her offering. She dug it in her own pocket and put extra to it to give it to me. That's the smallest church I've ever preached in and the biggest offering I've ever seen. So I believe in God's financial plan. I believe in it. I've sold so much into the kingdom. When it's time for me to reap, I'm going to receive. I believed in the plan. So therefore, I sold into the plan, but I made a hundred and blah, blah, blah money. I, it was $10,000 plus I put into St. Stephen's. You see what I'm saying? So, so I expect that to come back. I expect that to come back. I've given it, so I expect it to come back. You see what I'm saying? So, so I don't know what that church had sown in California to so many other people. Right, right. They established a $1.2 million conference just, and it was free. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But you can see in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a younger state of your spiritual walk, you can see where that would kind of like be kind of crazy. You know what I'm saying? Because your understanding hasn't reached that point of, you know, so that, right. that, that's kind of like, or you, you know, what's my habit, but I want to be, I want to do it. You know what I'm saying? That's the best place to be. Right. That is the place that's right. exactly what that's I'm saying. That's how I am now. That's, that's what I was doing. <laughs> right. You know, religion gets in the way. Of but, you, but you know what? Don't wait. Start where right. you at. Right. Oh, yeah. the, lady, the lady who came with a penny, mm -hmm. that came with a penny compared to all the people who shortcut it, mm -hmm. the offering. Jesus said, Jesus, now, now look at this. Now imagine yeah. if I stood up here like this while y'all bringing the money and I'm watching the offering. I'm watching the offering. I'm watching exactly what you put because this is what Jesus did. Jesus stood in the synagogue and he watched. And he watched the lady put the penny in. And then he looked and he said, All oh, y'all shortcut. Mm -hmm. This lady put it, all she had was a penny. She put it in. Her, her, her offering is way more than yours because you were disobedient. And so she gave all that she had. She was in obedience. So, 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 so don't wait. If it's, if it's $2, if you've made twenty dollars for a week and it's two dollars, be obedient to what God has told you to do because that's the blessing. It's not the amount. Yeah, it's the it's it's, it's the, the blessing is in the obedience to what He has established. He has established that ten percent is holy unto the Lord. So if ten percent is holy, regardless of what the ten percent amount is, that's what He's asking for you to do to be obedient in it. You know, I was challenged. This was my biggest hurdle. I need to write that down. How we get all honey? <laughs> 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 talking about I, was I was challenged last weekend. Um, I took my goddaughter and her friends to skate break. And me and Jewel, we had a little conversation prior to that, right? So we talking. 
I get in the car, and I'm like, look, I don't, I don't feel like I know everything, but I know my heart, and I know where I'm going. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm focused. I got my eyes on the prize. I'm good. Right. But it was a challenge when a child asked you. So when that, you know, it's an adult, it's an adult question, because I'm like, how do I answer this question, <laughs> you know? What was the question? But I thought about it, and the question was, when you give money to the church, how you know where the money goes? You don't. This is, so I replied to her, thankfully with the understanding that I have now, I said, you don't know, but the fact is, you, you give it to God before you give it to anybody else. You right. know what I'm saying? I, was, I, had to, I had to really find the words. It was a challenge because I was falling off. Like, well, well, hopefully the church has a system in, in place. Right, right. Right. I right. said, you can't you can't worry about that. Once you do what you do, and if it comes from the right place, you do what you can. Mm -hmm. but, but see, these are things that our children are hearing constantly. This is what does, it inhibits their, their initial, you know, like love for God. You know what I'm saying? Because they hear an adult say these things, it's crazy to me. You know, it's like, this is something somebody planted in her head. She's young, there's no reason for her to even question that. You know what I mean? See, they say, they say money, the root of all evil. That's not that's not true. It's, not it's the love of money. It's the love of money that is the root of all evil. So 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 if 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 because that's what happens with our obedience to God. It's 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 the cares of the world and the lust of other things that creep in. Turn to Mark 4. Mark 4. It's okay. It's, I asked God to do this. This way and tell you to do this. Go ahead. where the word is sown, 
But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and take away the word that was sown in their hearts. In another part of the Bible, in another part of the gospel, it says when they don't understand, Satan's allowed to steal the word. The word goes forth, and because you don't have understanding, he steals that away from you. If you refuse to understand, he steals it from you. Right? And these are likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard it, heard the word, immediately received it with gladness. They all jumping around the church, they doing everything, they flying around on the uh, uh, ceiling fans, they going backflips, right? They doing all this stuff. It says, but have no root in themselves, and so endure, but for a time afterward. But when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Tied. They, 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 they get happy when it's about joy. They get happy when it's about love. They get happy when the guest preacher comes and says, come here, I want to lay hands and yeah. prophesy yeah. in your life. Yeah. All that happens, but when it's time to sow, then they get offended. Then they get offended. Right? So, so check it out. And these are they which are sown among the thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of the world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things enter in and choke the word of God, and it become of unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundredfold. So, the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things. The lust of other things. The lust of throwing things that are not pertaining to the kingdom. The things, the deceitfulness of riches, the pride of life. The pride of life, right? And the cares of the world. The cares of the world. I got a light bill. I got these kids in the house. I got, I got nine people in my house. And my, and my income has been short for the last three years. It's not the same as what it was when I moved in four years ago. I, I've taken a $60,000 pay cut, but I continue to do the things of the kingdom. I'm sitting scratching my head. Saying, how are we making it over? Yes, sir. Long suffering, too. Yes. Long suffering. Patience. That's just, God is exercising yes. the fruits of the Spirit in my life. All these things are coming to pass. And then when it's happened is when it was abundant. When it was abundant, I brought all the tithes into the storehouse. Mm -hmm. That there may be meat in his house. And then now that there's meat in his house, when I need it and I can't see it, it just poof, it pops up. I'm able to reap. I'm able to pull from the kingdom. I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I can't work as much. But for some way, somehow, by the end of the month, everything pops up and is, and is working in my favor. Because I'm doing exactly what yes. he said for me to do. And I continue to do what he says I can do in my lap. In my lap. I continue to do exactly what he told me to do. So, so, so in my time of need, I have the audacity uh -huh. to go to him and say, hey, you said that if I bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that you would rebuke the devourer for my sake. You said that if I bring the tithes into the storehouse, that you will open up the window of heaven and pour out a blessing that I'm not able to handle. You said that if I tithe and be a cheerful giver, that you'll make sure that all grace abounds towards me. You said these things. You said that I have not because I've asked not. I'm asking for yes. my blessing. You said that when I pray to believe that I receive. So where is it? Right. In expectation. Right. In hope. You see what I'm saying? He's bound by his word. So even though it's not popping up sometimes in the form of money, it's popping up in food. It's popping up in equipment that That's I need. Right. That's right. <laughs> People are blessing me. But, in the, in the, but see, in the interim, when, when, when somebody else 
blesses you, you're reaping, but at the same time, when you receive, you're allowing the person that's in the kingdom to be blessed because now he's sown. You see what I'm saying? But, but back to the drug dealer, he's not of the kingdom. He's wicked. So now the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. It's another avenue that God's using to bless his, his children. Should you take it a step further and tell them where you're going to sow? Maybe that will bring, bring him. That's, 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 that's oh, evangelistic. That's what you are. Did you just tell them, look here, I'm sowing this in the kingdom. You know, maybe, you know, you never know. So my hope, yes ma'am. I have a question because I heard you say it several times in different points. But when it says some 30, 60, and some 100 fold. That's a good question. I was going to get there, I forgot. 3600, what's your level of comprehension about this subject of sowing and reaping? And he's going to bless you where you're at. And the thing about it is, your 30 fold blessing to you can seem like a hundred fold. Mm -hmm. But there's more. Yeah. Because he does exceedingly and abundantly above all that we have to ask and think. So when, so when he starts, it's like, it's like when you start out with God, man, he puts you on this little training, this, this little training bike, and he's right there beside you, pushing you, and you're walking by, and he's flipping you candy, and he's patting you on your little head, and he's carrying you around, and got the bottle in your mouth, and he's doing all these things, and you're growing. But as time goes on, he starts, you growing, so, so you're getting a little bit more freedom, and, you, and you're roaming away a little bit farther from the house. And when you roam away from father from the house, the Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go, and he, and he will. Huh? I just read that. Yes, and he will not depart. So when you have grown up in the kingdom, and you start moving on your own, and the training wheel's gone, and the little nuggets are not there, and the candy's not there, are you still going to operate the way you were when affliction and turmoil and lack and all these things are starting to come because these things are maturing you? You see what I'm saying? These things are maturing you in your walk. So you have to rely on what was going on when you was dropping a dime and he was giving you 20 cents right away. He was giving you the microwave experience. But 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 when you sow $100 and you sow $50 and you sow $1,000 or you sow $2 in obedience and you saying, okay, it used to come right away. It used to come right away. But when it pops up in the time of need, when it pops up in the time of need, it's because you're understanding. Because, because see, he has to get you in a training mode. So, so, so now, I don't think I'm, I've received 100% now yet. I don't. I'm, I'm, I'm on 34. I'm on 34. I, I, I believe that it's so much more than what I'm getting. Right. I do. <laughs> I got a lot of things to do. But, but, but see, but see, it also goes back to am I, am, am I, am I sowing the same way I was sowing when it was when it was over a hundred grand? Not the quantity, the same way. See, see, it was a tithe and an offering. Sometimes now it's just. Because I'm, I'm I, because of the cares of the world, the cares of my household, the cares. And, that's, and, and I'm going to be honest with you, that's a lack of faith on my part. Because it's just a tithe and not an offering. I say, okay, I'll give you a tithe and I'll give you an offering on Tuesday and an offering the next week. And then when I get paid again, I'll give you a, see, I'm manipulating the scene. Because I used to, I used to tithe an offering the same time and offer and offer tithes and offering at the same time because it was so much and my life hadn't acquired more things yet. You see what I'm saying? I was making the money but I hadn't acquired the things, the responsibilities. Then the responsibilities come and then the income drops and then I say, uh-oh. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just about how far are you willing to go with God? How far are you willing to trust Him? Huh? Tithe is 10%. If I walk up to you and give you a dollar, you come to the offering plate and drop it down. That's so what you're it is. just 
So, 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 so Sunday, somebody walked up to me before church started, said happy birthday, and gave me $50. That was awesome. When I wrote my check, I had, I had a certain amount of my time, I said, okay, I gotta add five more dollars to it. It's 2%. That was immediately, immediately. That was a gift. Immediately. Yeah, that's a gift. That's a gift. So, so immediately, but that was increased. Whatever you want, is your offering is anything after? Yeah, after the time. Yes, and they operate differently too. They yeah, because the tithe is a requirement. Go ahead. Now go ahead. That's why the tithe is a requirement. The offering is the seed. Right. right. And then it says he doesn't receive the offering if you don't tithe first. See, I was, I was trying. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. 
It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with, the, with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Honor the Lord with the first fruits of your increase. Where did hope go? Don't <laughs> Hope is went out the window. <laughs> you know, you know, God's really been we dealing with me in this area of teaching right, right. God has really been in, 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 in yeah. because there's been times I wanted to, and He said, "Not yet." Mm -hmm. And then now He is, I guess, cut me loose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. He said, "Teach, teach." <laughs> and, and and because. Because it's not to benefit me. I don't get the money. That's right. If you come up here and put $1,000, I don't get that $1,000. I want a building. Mm -hmm. I want to get equipment. I want us to, to, to prosper. I want the right. dance team to have the little nice pretty outfits. Right. I want to have mic stands and a, and a brace team. And I want drums and piano. Right. You see what I'm saying? I want us to get up out of this place. Mm -hmm. And get in our own place so we can be here Monday and Tuesday and Friday and Sunday. And I ain't got to be here. There can be other people up here teaching. You see what I'm saying? But we, we, we can't do that if there's no ability. And we're in a world where the system requires paper. Mm -hmm. And we can't be a blessing to others either. We're broke. Blessing to God. That's right. It's, it's, it's an avenue of blessing for God's people. And, and the hope is I don't need your money. And the hope right. is built in that. It's for us and our hope. Let me dig a little deeper. It's for us and our hope. And, you know, and I think it ties into that, to be very honest with you, when I look at that. Because what do we hope in? It's what, whatever we, it is that we, he talked about the lust, you know, the lust, and, and we're, we're dealing with those things, and we keep reverting back to them. But if our hope is in Christ, and we're totally dependent on Christ, then we'll give into that. We'll give you my all because my hope is in you. It's almost like, all right, show me that you say it. I hear your lip service, but are your actions there with it? So yeah, absolutely, that hope is built in that. No, I was just gonna say like charitable things. Like you know, we I know what the I know what the kingdom need needs things. Like I know we need to sow into this ministry so that it is you know broader and, and greater. You know, but then you know people send me things through the mail like you know <laughs> you know for the kids for the sick kids. Do you sow into that? Like what? Like the Rwanda, the African kids? Well, well let, me tell you, let me tell you, I have sown in the feed of children. It automatically comes out of my check, out of my bank account, continuously. I only, I just get an email, thank you for donating to feed of children. One night, I was laying in bed, now I don't know if it was a commercial or what, but we was in a hotel, and I was asleep, and I heard God say, I said, God, what do you want me to do? He said, feed my children. I wake up. The TV. It was on there, feed the children. I got my phone out, I got my credit card out, I called. I immediately set up for that was years ago. It was years ago. And it just comes out. So that just comes from your heart. What when I go, when I go through a shop, when I go through a crime, would you like to uh, give to uh, muscular? Yes, yes. Absolutely. Yes. 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 That's right. Yes. I'm going through McDonald's. I'm I'm I had that much money one day. church. 
a ministering time for years. Am I lying, Josh? For years on top of years. One day, uh, 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 Carmen comes to me and says, come here. I said, she said, God, the Holy Spirit told me that you go do the offering. I said, well, I can't just go, Pastor. She said, for me, he said, well, get on up there. So I got up there. I ministered the offering, right? The next week, I was sitting in line. And he looked down the line at me. He said, go. I went up there. The next week, he said, go. After a couple weeks, it was just, I knew that's what I was supposed to do. For three or four years, every single Sunday, I ministered the time. How can I cheat? How could I cheat it, knowing that I ministered it, right? So there was times I knew it was 150, I gave 120. And I'm saying to myself, the 30 does not break me. Why am I, and I dig back in for the 30 and I put it there. It looked like I gave more, but I was struggling. You see what I'm saying? It looked like I gave an extra offering, but it wasn't that, I was struggling. The Holy Spirit said, how can you minister and not be what you called them to do? So now I don't struggle anymore. I don't want you to think if I throw like something extra, I'm struggling. Because I don't struggle no more. I do what I'm supposed to do. I do what I'm supposed to do in that area. Because money was my issue. I sold drugs. Not because I like drugs, because I like money. So God said, God said, okay, you know, give and you receive. I said, okay. Give it up to see. And it didn't work out exactly that way. <laughs> but when I need to read, it's there. Because, because the, 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 the pistachio. Okay, so let me stop you right there. So what if the drug dealer comes to the church and puts the tithe in the, in the Then what? The, the, the wealth of the wicked is paid up for the right. just. Right. So will he be blessed in that? In that? No, because he's not a believer. Well, if he, 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 if He's still going to sow a jail cell, even if his understanding of the word is right. And, and, and what happens is, what happens, say he gets up out of the pew with full conviction, and he comes down humbly, and he sows it, but he can't stop hustling. Mm -hmm. He's going to sow a jail cell. He's going to sow and he's going to reap a jail cell, even though he was trying. Hey. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Child support. Whatsoever. What about child support? So you take that first 10% of that too? I did. Right. And I'm just saying. I did. Mother, you know, getting child support. You oh, you that. receiving child support. Yes. Is that increase? Depends on how you look at it. Is it increase? I don't know. Sometimes it is, sometimes it ain't. It's always increase. It's always increase. It's always increase. You, you would see, see what you're looking at is the, the requirement, and you're not looking at the fact that it's an avenue of blessing. No, I'm thinking about, but like see, you but, said, the needs of your child. But listen you know? to me. Listen to me. You're looking at it as a requirement. What? What am I looking at as a requirement? You, you're saying you're, 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 you're getting down to the minute dollar, mm -hmm. right? Well, what about if it comes this way? What about if it comes this way? Or what it's about still, no, I'm just but what I'm saying, to listen, to me, listen to me, Christina. Right. When it comes, he says the first fruit of all thine all increase. Thine You're thine. trying to section it out. Right. I am. He I says the know. first fruit of all thine increase. Right. However it comes, whether it's a holy handshake, whether it's somebody saying, here, I just want to give you something, right. whether it's you punching the clock, whether you're walking down the street and you uh, the wind blows and there's twenty dollars, right. however you increase, you have to take the. See, I look at it as an opportunity okay. to get a blessing. Right. I just needed clarity because, like I said, as a mom, and if you're struggling, you're gonna you're gonna tend to. It's not the minute dollar; it's just the needs of your child. What do they need? You know what I'm saying? Like you think of it that way, but you're right. You shouldn't think of it that way. When I said it's gonna be, it's gonna be it's a thing. It's gonna come back one way or another. When I said, right. I just need no, to be 
no hot water, no food. Right. That was us. He wasn't exaggerating. That was us. Cold, socks on my hands, sweatsuits on in the bed, one kerosene heater in the house, and everybody in the house was big, and I was tired. I was making $9 an hour, and I was tired. I was going, I was loving to go to work because there was water, because there was heat, and there was food. I'm being selfish, leaving the house and happy because I'm going to work cooking, and I can nibble. And I was coming to church because, because the tithe wasn't going to pay the bill. All right. I'm only making $9 an hour. It wasn't cutting no heat on. It wasn't paying for no rent. It wasn't doing any of that stuff. So I had the only one choice but to trust, okay, then look. You got it. But you know what? We, we moved out of there on our own accord. We moved out of there on our own accord. The heat kept getting cut back on. Some of the eviction notice would come. We, the, 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 the rent would get paid. Somehow we'd stretch a little bit of food we had. I'd steal some food out. I stole some ribs out of work and brought them home. I, I, was, I was doing wrong, but, but at the same time, I kept trusting. I wasn't stealing money. The, vacuum, the, the eviction notice was coming, and we would still be in there. And we left on our own accord because I kept trusting God. But I'm crying. I'm sad. I remember sitting around the kerosene heater, and the devil's on one shoulder, and I can hear him saying, why are you selling for this? You know how to get money. I got two felonies on my head, crying with socks on my hands, freezing cold, reading the Bible by kerosene because the light's out. And I'm reading, and the devil's saying, why are you selling for this? Get in the car and go to Hagerstown and just spend the week. Get the money. I'm not going to be him no more. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to work these principles. I'm going to do what God has called me to do. I'm going to continue to keep walking in this manner. But you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. I see my kids get up. They're freezing cold. They're walking down. We be heating water up on the stove so they can take a bath. And I'm tithing. And I'm tithing. And I'm tithing. And it's six, seven of us up in there. You either trust God or you don't. That's right. In every area of your life. That's right. In every single area of your life. You either trust him or you don't. Hmm. You gotta let him in. In every single area. He wants all of you. Hmm. Not all the day. He wants all. And it's not even for his benefit, it's for yours. That's right. Absolutely. Go ahead, go there. Tell that side of it. What time is it? You don't want to dig into hope a little bit? <laughs> yes, ma'am, let's go. Um, you were talking about tithes and offerings and throwing seeds. What if financially you only have enough to tithe, but you don't have additional for offerings? Are you still throwing seeds? Be obedient. Be obedient in tithe, and if you have to, give a penny offering. Be obedient in tithe. I remember one Sunday, I got up to church. And I said, man, God, God was dealing with me. I said, whatever you have in your hand, if you don't have anything in your hand, put something in your hand. I don't care if it's a penny. And if you don't have a penny, come up here. You remember that day? And I peeled off. Who don't have an offering? Don't be shy. Raise your hand. Who doesn't have an offering? Raise their hand. And I began to hand out money. Began to hand out money. And I was saying, oh, God, put something in your hand and bless God. Be obedient to the top. It was, it's that important that I see people get blessed. So, so I said, listen, I'm going to put this in your hand. You have the option to put it in your pocket. You have the option to put it in your pocket. So if you hand them $10 and they only put a dollar in, they put nine in their pocket. They tie. They tie. They tie. And that's what it's about. And he just, and he just called, 
all those people. He just gave all those people the ability to tie. And now we start talking about the 1600 fold blessing coming. That's just amazing. Now, yeah, that's a question. Yeah, that's just amazing. Yeah, that's just well, you were talking about going long, and I just got here, so yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you said, hold on, hold on. I want to go cut off. I, any more questions? <laughs> Anybody else got any questions? Anything? Did I answer? Yes, sir. Is it tonight tonight? Or? Oh, no, you, you, we, we got off the beaten path, cuz. <laughs> <laughs> we started somewhere. We started with hope, we started talking about money, and then got off of it yet. I completely understand. But I think that's but the you know last of the church. I already told you, told everybody what you already asked. <laughs> <laughs> why do you think? Why do you think God was holding you back from, from discussing the finances and things like that? What, what do you, what do you, because you, because, because, because your walk with Him was more important than. Than me telling you about this. He wanted you to get to a place spiritually. He wanted you to get to a place of trusting me. He wants you to get to a place of trusting him. He kept, I would go and he said, no, not yet. Not yet. So Sunday morning I get up here and I and I tiptoe on it. But but for me to teach a whole lesson like this is what I've been waiting for him to release me with. And, 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 and what happened was, it was y'all's questions that we missed it. It was your questions. He said, okay, they want to know. An increase will come. That's right. Because the enemy attacked you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I've been attacked. That's the enemy? That's not the enemy. What is it? What is it? Holy Spirit convicts. Oh, maybe I'm doing it. Holy Spirit convicts. I want to do so much. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, I, I actually, like, you plant a seed of understanding in my heart that I realize that I want to do it. Lusting after the things in the kingdom, Christine. Yes. Lusting after the things in the kingdom.
And, and, and I, 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 so, I, so, I so want to hand this over because I, I see what y'all put in when you put the envelopes in. And, and, and being human, I always say, is this the time? Is this the time? Are they being obedient? I want to hand this over so I don't see it. I don't want to have to deal with that. I want you to be obedient to God on your own without me seeing it. You see what I'm saying? I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. But I had nobody to hand. I have somebody to hand it over to now. I had nobody to hand it over to. <laughs> and, I, and now I can release it inside of my hand. But 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 to give. But if you take an offering and give it to somebody else who's in need, God can still bless it because you're sowing it in a kingdom way. Right. You're taking care of the poor. Yes. So can that still be a tithe, though? No. That's the tithe belongs to the That's storehouse. The tithe belongs to the storehouse. So the tithe belongs to the church. Your offerings are above the tithe. Wow. I mean, what Nikki was saying, well, that what would be considered an offering, yes. although it's not coming through the church, it's right. still being used in well, a well, 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 see, this, this is what you have to understand. It says give. Be a giver, and it shall be given unto you. See, 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 don't get caught up. The tithe is a tithe. That, that belongs to the church. Yes. But, when, but, but don't look as every time you hand somebody something as an offering. Be the blessing. That's right. 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 Be the blessing. Right. But what if? If, 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 they, if they need a financial seed, then be the blessing. If they need love, yes. sow it. Be the blessing. If they need a hug and a somebody in an ear, yes, be the blessing. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. All right, dog. I got you next, guys. Come on. So, <laughs> what if the option is bless this person or pay your time? Like, say, yeah. for instance, Ties. So then you get them and they put out. Ties. Bless them with love. Ties. Okay. The Bring them to church with you, yeah, sure. Teresa opened Pandora's box. Mm -hmm. Tithing is the requirement. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, maybe it was just late, but one of my boys Well, that was my question. What's the difference between a tithe and an offering? A tithe is the mandatory ten percent right. you should be giving of your of whatever I don't know what you're doing, income. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm like, I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, the next thing I'm going to ask you is that we need monthly and how you and how you want to do it. See, because because yeah, how you manage it. Because if you get paid four weeks, right, and then the fourth week you calculate the whole pay for the month. And you bring the tithe of all four weeks. That's how you want to do it. For me, it was a lot easier to say, pay the day. This is the tithe. This is what I had. That's, that's my way. But some people can, are good stewards, man. Some people are good stewards over what they have. And they can accumulate all month and say, okay, here, God, that's yours for the month. I'm, I'm, I'm rolling. So, you're taking above like 10%. It's not all because the seed. And that's what that was my question. Also, I don't know if you can hear what I'm saying, but if all you have is your child and you have it in the offer, I just said that even if you just have a penny and you're offering above your tithe to give that. If you, if that that's, what, that's what you want to do. Do what God requires, which is the offering. But the amount of time. Yeah, it's time. But the amount of time says, will a man rob God? So if we know right now we're going through a rough time and can we can make up for it like, like by getting extra another time like so it again, all evens out. This is this is this this is okay. I understand what you're saying. Say the bill's tight, something needs to be paid, and if I cut my ties out, something ain't gonna get paid. This is this is your this is your relationship. Right? You know, God knows that you missed your tithe. If you are convicted in that area, please make it up. Please make it up. See, that's why the grace of I gotta teach it right. 
the grace of God is so merciful that if you don't pay your tithes with this knowledge, he says, okay, you just miss out on your seed or on, 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 on that part of obedience. You miss out on the things that I want to do in that area. But, but, but when your heart is right, you will make it up. You will double up. You right. will do what you have to do. Right. And see, and see, with those offering envelopes, time is first, right? right? right. Yeah. And then everything else, right? Let everything else suffer in those areas. Let the media suffer. Let the band suffer. Let benevolence suffer. Let all those things suffer. Right. Time is first. You see what I'm saying? Tithe is first. What is benevolence? I'm sorry. Benevolence is, is us helping the community. Us helping when somebody's lights are getting ready to be cut off. That we, you know what I mean? So someone recently said to me that when they are a guest at a church, they don't give. So that is not. That's, 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 that's not how they want to do it. When I'm a guest at any church, when the offering goes up, see, see, it's my concept. It's my concept of my understanding of giving. When the, when the offering plate comes out. Well, that person right. then, they think, they see it as given to the church, not the kingdom. Or the kingdom, the kingdom. The kingdom. Right. right. But, but see, but see, but see, look at it. I, I want you to look at it the right way. It's my blessing time. Mm -hmm. This is my time. You go to some churches and they say it's offering time. The roof blows off. Yay. Yeah. The roof goes off the church because they they have a great understanding of what's going on. They have a yes, they have a great understanding of of of, of what's going on. So when the offering plate comes up, whether the offering plate is in line at Target and I'm giving to muscular dystrophy, mm -hmm. I give because I know this is my time of sowing. The opportunity for me to be God's distribution center in this earth has presented itself, and I do it. No matter where I'm at, no matter what church I'm in, you will see me in the offering line. Let me answer this kind of like what Shelly was saying. So, um, say, you know, people visit different churches, even three, maybe two, three churches in a day, visiting with family, they go to this first. So, it's automatically known, no matter what you put in what envelope, the first 10% is tied, because he knows, so nobody else needs to know. First 10% aside, each digital church you go to, that's just your seed you plant, that's your offering. Right, now, now, my personal viewpoint, mm -hmm. my personal viewpoint, I only tithe at St. Stephen's before here. Okay. If I went to another church and I hadn't paid my tithes, say my tithe was $200, mm -hmm. and I hadn't paid my tithes, that church did not get my tithes. St. Right. Stephen's got my tithe. They got an offering. The store is the storehouse. Say Stevens got my all, got my time. Wherever I el and wherever else I am, got my offering. So New Life is our storehouse. Right. right. Okay, but I'm saying, so you're you're designating that. Well, that's you right here. That's what I did. Right. But I'm saying you didn't put there's it. No, in there, there's, there's no there's nowhere designated that it goes to a particular house. I can play on words right. and say this is the storehouse. I can say that. I'm not playing on words. I, I I can't I can't allow myself to do that. Okay. One, one second, I'm gonna let you. I can't say that, but this is my house. This is where I worship. This is where I get my spiritual food. This is where I choose to be my spiritual home. So I take care of my spiritual home. If I'm out somewhere else, I can give them 10, 20, I can give them a hundred dollars, I can give them a two hundred dollar offering. But that's not my tithe. My two hundred dollars goes to 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 my, my my personal spiritual household. You see what I'm saying? I hear what you're saying. That's that's what you believe. So you said if you bounce around the three different churches, what are you supposed to get? No, I'm just saying how you know that your tithe was to your storehouse. Mm -hmm. right. Anything additional, I don't care what order you went to it in, that's an offering. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's yeah. what I okay. So you're okay. not tithing at the other churches, you're tithing at your church. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Verse 8. Now I've got three, verse 8.
Let's go to six. Let's go to six. It says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from my ordinances, and that have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, say the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have, I, have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye have cur you are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that is enough to receive. All right? Look at, the, look at the next verse. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast their fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Neither shall your vine cast the fruit. It's going to grow in the time that is needed to be grown. you got to trust him. He said, I will rebuke the devourer. I'll be the pesticide. Don't worry about it. When they come to eat up the field, don't worry about it. It's still going to be there. It's going to be there when you need it. And it's going to produce it when it's needed. In it's time of need. It's not going to come when you think it's going to come. And this is where trust and assurance right. comes into place. So, in the proper aspects, this is saying that when you are, when you rob God, you're basically robbing yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. It's almost like you're tying in his hand. Yes. 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 Instead of just trusting his people that he can provide and that you can it. So, 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 you know, I had a conversation with somebody Sunday and they said, you know, they, they want to split their tithes. And I said, well, my personal opinion is that, you know, this is your storehouse and this is where you say you're going to be. You know, you shouldn't want, you shouldn't want to split your tithes. What do you mean split it though? One week he sends it here, one week he sends it somewhere else. One week here, one week somewhere else. And, and um, when you see that word, that there may be meat in my house, that's translated to ability. That there may be ability that we can do what God has called us to do in the kingdom. There's things, Dawn Young, one person is in North Carolina. She won't be here Sunday. Every Tuesday when I post, we're going to Bible study. She says, I'm there in spirit. And I say, I'm working on your camera. If I can get the right camera and the right equipment, she can be right here, right now, mm -hmm. with us, learning with us every Tuesday night. Right. Ooh, gospel, TV, gospel Street yeah. TV. Oh, <laughs> and, and what happens is now, and now, now, we're not just sitting in Hagerstown. Right. Help everybody else. Now somebody in the middle of the night can wake up and log on to New Life for ministry that is 12 hours ahead of time, mm -hmm. right? And be watching us on TV right now through the internet. And then that turns into world ministry. And then what happens is it gives somebody else another avenue to sow into this ministry. And, and, and this, this is how we come from declaring to our own building to us doing big time ministry. But it has to start with us. Right. We have to take care of our own ministry. Right. This is not my ministry, this is our ministry. This is our ministry, this is our house, this is our home, this is where God has called us to be. So, I got a question. So if you're being obedient, right? Mm -hmm. And you say you're splitting your time, are you He's really still, being obedient? Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. He's tired. Yeah, he is. He's tired. But he's, he's, he's tired. He's not but, but he's tired in the two places that he's calling home. That's a whole different conversation. Right, and, and I said, you know, me personally, I, I, I choose I choose my own home. If I choose to send an office somewhere else, that's something different. But but there's going to come a time. Now, now, he knows. But see, but see, he knows. But see it's, not, it's, not, it's not tit for tat, right? right. But there may be a come a time where you need the house to take care of you. Right. 
And now, 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 not that the house doesn't want to take care of you, but the house might not have the ability to take care of you. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. The meat house. Yes, sir. He'll provide in this time. 
Because what happens is when the provisions start going up, we start saying, hey, I can do more. And we start being a little bit more loose, forgetting the times when it was tight. And that's what happened to me. I want to let you know that. That happened to me. And now I'm back to a place where I feel like I'm almost in daily provisions. But he provided in those times when I was in daily provisions. Mm -hmm. So now I know that now that I'm in this place, he'll continue to, to do what he did then. So I trust him to get back to the place where I been, began to breathe again. You see what I'm saying? I trust him to get back to that place. This is just another area of testing. This is just another area of proving. This is an area where I went past God and did things that I was not supposed to do. I stretched and started re 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 rejoicing in the things of the world again. I wanted new cars every two years. When I should have just been getting another car after five, six years. I should have drove the ones I had. I bought five, six cars in six years. Foolish. Because the money was there. Because I saw it there in that month. Not thinking about six months, seven months, eight months down the road. Not being a good steward of what God had been giving me. Getting a word saying, don't buy nothing because it's getting ready to drop. Mm. And that's what Joseph did. Joseph said, the famine's coming. Mm -hmm. Bring it to the storehouse. That's right. Bring it to the storehouse. And it was built up in the storehouse. So then when the famine came, there was so much yeah. there that they didn't have to rely on the land. They didn't have to rely on this, the world system. They had it in the storehouse.